Kevin Raber here, and I'm back in the Palouse. It's smoky and hazy, but we're having a good time. If you watched my first Palouse video, you know that the Palouse is probably one of my favorite places to photograph. And I normally come to the Palouse in June when they plant, and I come back in August, which is where I am right now, in the middle of August, when the harvest takes place. And it's a lot of fun because you go from green to this beautiful gold. We're at sunset right now on top of Steptoe Butte. Not gonna have much of a sunset. We're gonna have what I call the sun ball tonight, mainly because there are so many wildfires and forest fires in the area and no wind whatsoever that we just have this haze and smoke hanging over us to the point where you can actually smell it. It kind of smells like one of those uh, cabins you walk into where you can smell the, the fire burning in the fireplace. The challenges we face will work through, as we always do. That's part of being a landscape photographer. If it wasn't smoky and hazy, it might be thunderstormy and rainy or too windy to even stand up, which is sometimes the case up here on top of Steptoe Butte. So we're doing what landscape photographers do, we adapt. Well, the cliche is that it's the Tuscany of America, but that's true in some ways. It's just amazingly photogenic rolling hills uh, a lot of agriculture, which leads to beautiful patterns in uh, what is mostly wheat and beans around here. Uh, with the combination of tilled earth and harvest going on, you get beautiful abstracts and patterns in the, in the hills. Combine that with light that uh, sculpts the earth and it just uh, makes for magical photography. When you're challenged by the conditions of the weather or the lighting, Sometimes you gotta look for the other things that are right there in front of you and photograph them. Try something new, look for something different, look for the abstract, look down at your feet, look behind you, and it'll only make you do the pictures you really like to do better. We had an opportunity to uh, stop and photograph this red barn, which was in kind of a valley and the uh, owner of the farm comes zooming up on his uh, four-wheeler and he's got three or four dogs chasing him, and it turns out to be a really nice guy that um, he harvests his garlic. So each one of those bundles you see right there are about 50 seeds going down the line. Who buys them? From uh, other farmers? Or? Uh, I don't know yet. <laughs> I mean, I've sold some, and I give it a lot of garlic away. Like you'll see today when you leave, you'll have some garlic. You'll be eating it later, and you'll be like, well, GD. <laughs> GD means. Oh, yeah. That's a good. Oh, I can only imagine. <laughs> I, I, I knew what you meant. Oh, yeah. So, we got to bring home some garlic and we got to listen to his stories. Uh, I know a number of farmers here, and now I know a, a garlic uh, farmer uh, that just have the best uh, intentions, great hospitality, and they're just some of the nicest people in the world. Kevin had this idea, there was this bus that uh, he likes to take photographs of. It's an old bus with a lot of character, and so the, the group was photographing a bus, moving all around it, and we were uh, having a great time getting in close, making abstracts, and the, uh, the owner uh, walked up, and we struck up a conversation. Two and a half years ago, we purchased this 1948 flexible clipper. We found it uh, in a guy's backyard where it had been sitting for 20 years and it was buried up to the wheels in, in mud, but I'm um, still in good shape. 90% of the bus has been disassembled from the inside and insulated. I spent four months this last winter doing a complete gut and rewire of all of the electrics. And we took a trip across country, across the northern part of the country last year to New York. We zigzagged back and forth, hit five national parks, 7,000 miles in 21 states, and did fantastic. But my only concern really was was that wiring, so everything's new. Don't have to worry about that anymore. It's really great to make the connections to the local people, uh, as well as all the other photography that's going on. My friend, who is one of the largest wheat growers in the Palouse, he allows us to use the uh, roads and travel deep into the farm. And it's the most beautiful rolling hills, and right now it's dirt, and he makes the best dirt you've ever seen. I'm talking dirt like you've never seen dirt before. It's dusty. <laughs> That's one thing I can say, it is really dusty. 
I think my favorite part has been the, the old vehicles and the, uh, the abandoned buildings and the farms. Well, what I like about the, the images uh, is the abstract, rust and, and varying colors. And I shoot with a, a Fujifilm X-D20. Another great thing about this workshop is that there are quite a few Fuji shooters, got quite a, a good collection of, of, of lenses. So I've been lucky that, that people are, are generous enough to, to just let me use their lenses. And it's helping me decide which ones I want to buy in the future. Well, Kevin's been great. Uh, he really is a lot of fun to travel with, which is, uh, you know, a lot of people think workshops are only about photography, but really, you know, who, who your leader is matters a ton. And Kevin is uh, super knowledgeable about photography. He's had a long career in the field. He's been coming to the Palouse for uh, decades, and he just knows every corner, every dirt road. We've seen things that I feel like a lot of other people wouldn't see. He's a real joker, a great storyteller. Uh, he's just really fun to travel with. He's a great host. Oh, the food's fantastic. That's uh, almost up there with the scenery. I'm sorry, you know. We think landscape and we think rolling hills, mountains, trees, sunrises, and sunsets. But part of the landscape is the culture, it's the people. We come into some of these towns and there are stories galore. It just begs to ask, what happened here? Why is this place falling down now? But it looks at one time it was a thriving business. And you see that all throughout the towns and the villages of the Palouse. All these places once had a life. So take your camera off your tripod, throw it around your shoulder, take a walk down the street, take a look at what you can find. I wanna thank Michael for doing the videos for us on these last two trips. As challenging as it may be sometimes, weather-wise or uh, condition-wise like we have, I don't care what camera you have, you know, always come back from the Palouse with amazing photographs. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the Loomis Landscape. Good enough? Yeah, I'm going to do one more shorter. <laughs> Unique New York, Unique, wow, that is hard. Yeah, I know. Red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. Ha, ha, ha.